Welcome back. This is The Takeaway, where today we are taking a deep dive into the issue of childcare. I'm Melissa Harris Perry, and I've been in conversation with Dorian Warren, co president of Community Change. And Dorian, in our partnership, I like to think of you as like the solutions guy. So let's hear it. What is currently on the agenda for addressing these issues? Last month, President Biden stumped on behalf of the Human Infrastructure Bill, which is, frankly, the centerpiece of his Build Back Better plan. And, and he was speaking at the Capital Child Development Center in Hartford, Connecticut. And Melissa, I thought it was interesting that he made this issue so personal through a series of reflections on a difficult time that he had as a single parent. Um, we all know the story, you know, the tragic death of his wife in a 1972 car accident. And the president said this. I felt, well, I'll get some help. And I was making a decent salary as a U.S. Senator, $42,000 a year. That was a decent salary. And uh, I could not afford the child care. Everybody wonders why I commuted every day, 265 miles a day, to be back and forth with my children. I could afford the train, it was cheaper, to be able to take every day so I could kiss my boys. But this is not just about a personal connection to the issue. The Build Back Better package has real policy interventions, Melissa. So we asked Karen D'Souza, writer at EdSource, about the potential efficacy of these proposed interventions. It could make a tremendous difference. I mean, I think one of the interesting things about it is that it is incredibly comprehensive. There's so much in that social safety net package, you know, from an expansion of Medicare to climate change regulations um, to a lot of the really crucial early childhood um, tenants. Uh, one of the things that's already happened is the child care credit. Um, many Americans are already receiving that. The part of the Biden reconciliation plan would make that permanent so that every, every family, anyone with small children would permanently be receiving an allowance to help take care of those kids. There's also universal preschool. I believe they're going for three and four year olds. At this point, so that there would be access to preschool for all American children. Um, and there's one more thing up, uh, it's affordable child care. So it would basically cap the amount of money that a family would have to pay at about 7%, which is what many advocates and experts think is a good cutoff for how much you should have to pay towards child care. And it would also raise the amount of money a child care worker makes per hour. Listen, this all sounds great, but I got to say, the only thing more broken than our child care system probably is like our federal legislature, and specifically the Senate. Still may need to come back around and talk about that in a deep dive. But I, I, as a result, no matter how good it sounds, I can change. But through it all, love remains. Mm -hmm. Into the silence. Encouraging K Love. They were the biggest band in all the land. Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. Now hear the real stories from the former U.S. manager of the Beatles, Apple Records, Ken Mansfield. I was on the roof of the Beatles for the last concert, one of the most historic moments in rock and roll. How I ever got there is still surprising to me that God was going to use that. And legendary Christian artist and record label executive Eddie DeGarmo. We're going to tell some stories, and most of them were true, right? <laughs> Good part of them. Good part of them. You wouldn't be in the music business if they were all true. There you go. Here are the behind the scenes stories on the intersection of Jesus and music in the Beatles, the Bible, and beyond. Available now at accessmore.com, the Access More app, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Access More. Caleb, one minute of encouragement. Francis and Fuso. Near our home, there was a burned out piece of land.